Hello and welcome to this video about user definitions, uses and groups in Flowable. I'm Valentin Zickner and I'm going to show you how you can create new uses in Flowable work. Let's get started and therefore we go to Flowable Control, since Flowable Control is our admin application for the Flowable work application. Uh, in Flowable work we or in Flowable Control, we have two places where we can basically find users. And first of all, that's in configuration user management. That's not the place where we are going to look at, since this is about the users in control. We need to click on users here, basically on the top level, and there we have definitions, users, and groups. And those are exactly the three topics we are going to talk about now. Let's get started with definitions. In definitions, we have basically templates for users, those we are called basically definition, and in there we can uh, select one of them. So user-admin is for example my admin user, and we see basically in here how that user definition looks like. So we have here some meta information like name, description, followed by the forms. Those are the forms which are used whenever we would like to create a new user. So when we click here on forms, we see basically in the definitions that we have, for example, the default user init form in here, which is the form which is used when we create a new user. When we go back to our uh, definition, we have member groups. Those are groups the user is basically part of. Uh, until Flowable 3.12, that was basically just used during uh, creation time. With 3.12, that is also used, for example, when you are using LDAP integration, that the user with that user definition is automatically assigned to that group. Lookup groups means uh, which group of users is allowed to see this user. So um, basically, all Flowable users are allowed to see uh, that specific user. When you have a client advisor and client, that is basically something where you can go ahead and restrict which users are allowed um, to see here somebody. Allowed features uh, is a list of features basically uh, the user can use inside the global work user interface as well as for um, the APIs. And action permissions is basically who is allowed to create that user. Here it's just restricted to uh, users with the group global administrator. Action handlers we don't have at all. Initial, uh, initial variables is basically a list of variables we are going to create when we create a new user by default. Quest variables is when we modify the user inside our global work. I just sign in there now as an admin. There we have contacts and here we have an edit. So basically all those variables are uh, coming through the rest variables. Then we have the conversation filters and contacts filters. That is basically um, conversation in case you are using engage and contacts is basically exactly that list of filter I am able to see here. Now, um, with that user definition, we can go ahead and create a new user. Therefore, we can go to the uh, users uh, menu point and you have here at the top a filter. Don't be confused since that create user button here is not going to create a user based on that information. That opens a dialog to create that user where you first need to select your user definition. Here I have now the user definition administration user. So that's the user definition we looked at and I'm going to create just a new user for myself. Now let's uh, uh, fill in my information. I have just picked a simple password. Now I can go ahead and create that user. Once created, I should appear here in that list. Uh, let's just uh, filter for myself since I have limited the page size to 25. I wasn't below the first 25. And we see here that that new user was created. 
we have some identity info. So those are the variables we just created based on our user definition. And we are assigned to the two groups, which we have seen as part of the member group. Now let's go ahead and basically um, go to the group section. Then we can also create a new group. So let's uh, call the tester type we can leave empty. I'm going to create that group now. And for my user, I can go ahead and say, I would like to add this group. So add the user to the group tester. Now my user is part of the group tester. We can also go ahead and edit the user definition and say rather than an admin user, I am now a default user. And uh, that default user basically doesn't have those groups by default. So let's go ahead and remove the global administrator. Otherwise I will still have admin capabilities. And with that, I am basically ready um, to sign in. Maybe let's also remove the admin user here and just edit this here on some description. And with that, we can now go ahead back here and say we are going to log in with my new user. So that's a default non-specific user. And when we go here to the um, uh, uh, IDM uh, API slash current user, we see now basically all the details which are returned for this users. So my member groups includes tester. So everything what tester sees, I'm allowed to see as well. We see the allowed features according to our user definition. Uh, we see the description which I entered. And we have here also from the user definition itself, the translation to different languages. Now with that, we already reached the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.